seaweed workshop with her. Huh. And we gathered, but she mainly gathered stuff. We just gathered, we gathered for the artistic part. She gathered for the food part. Mm -hmm. And we made a tempura mm -hmm. out of some of the seaweed. And it, was, it was really delicious. Mm. And, and with the art part, there's one that, in fact, I was just at the Academy of Sciences yesterday, and there's one that just kind of is all bunched up and looks red. But we would put it on a page and put, take an eyedropper and drop water on it, and it spreads out into this gorgeous fan. Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I brought a book by an artist who has been working with seaweed as an artistic and scientific project. So you, you should look at so that we book. So yeah. we made cards, but then from the mm. bowl kelp from the beach, which is yuck with all the flies and everything, we dried it out and we soaked it, dried it out, mm -hmm. and we made baskets from it. That's fabulous. And so, yeah, so it was, it was really neat. That's fabulous. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun if we did it from the baskets, from what you do, make it into the basket and dry it. And then you, you have a basket you can eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> munch on the sides of the that's basket. That's great. Oh my God, that's a wonderful. I love that whole idea. That's wonderful. Yeah. And As an artist, Somewhere in, I think West Marin, um, who makes like baskets from mm -hmm. the, the really long the bull cow the bull cow yeah um, but from the beach not not for yeah. lot or, well yeah. I assume I don't know there's yeah. a book I brought my stash of books and one of them oh, was good. a friend of a friend knows the woman who wrote this and she sent it to me as a present because she knows my whole life so it's this, it's incredible photographs mm. of her she basically oh, yeah, just yeah. scanned these in mm. went to all the museums and herself just. Beautiful, yeah, because we did the sea lettuce also yeah, in an artist. It's, it's, so, it's so it's good. Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, I feel compelled to give you some information about the state. I mean, I don't know how many of you are just going to go to the beach and start cutting seaweed, but um, the state regulates the seaweed pretty pretty heavily. So the sea palm, that one in the the slideshow that was the that was lit up bright green, um, is not allowed to be taken by anybody without a state license. Oh. Um, the other seaweeds you can harvest up to 10 pounds each time without any kind of state hmm. permit, any, any license. Um, having said that, most of the fish and game wardens don't even know what a sea palm is. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably can get away with it, but I'm not supposed to say that. Um, all right, there's more seaweed I'd like you to try. So out of the 600 varieties that exist on the coast, um, and the eight that I take, many of them are fabulous for the bath. This fu fucus is, um, is for inflammation. So what I do is I throw a handful in the bath and it plumps, mm. you're nodding like you know, do you do this? You yes, do this? yes. Um, it just feels good. It feels <laughs> so good and there's a gel that comes out of it that just is so, oh my God, it's very amazing to the body, but it's not just it's not just, it doesn't just feel good to the skin, it actually will help tissue regrow. Um, I studied with this uh, fabulous herbalist who is also a seaweed harvester and has a company up in Vancouver. His name is Ryan Drum. His website is brilliant. There's so much information. And he came to Mendocino and did a two-day workshop. And he talked about a woman that came to him whose legs had, been, had withered. And she was walking with like walkers and... He, she came to him and she said, I, you know, help me. And he said, well, if I give you this, this regimen and you follow it to a T, you'll be, you won't need crutches anymore. So he told her to get a boot, put fucus up to the knee six hours a day for six months. what? To fill the boot with water and fucus. So like, like she would be soaking her legs in fucus seaweed and seaweed water mm -hmm. for six months. And she did it, and she came back with this, and her legs had regrown tissue. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, That's it amazing. blew my mind. But I can imagine after seeing what the seaweeds can do for me. Oh my gosh, um, I can't. Yeah, I can't say enough about all of them. Um, so you can use all all the seaweeds for the bath. Um, my favorites are kombu and fugus. Hmm. Those are my favorites. You know, I what is the salty one? That's bull kelp. This one? The green? Mm -hmm. What was this? Yeah. Mary assist us. 
I thought this. Oh yeah, bull kelp. The Yamaya. Is, is Yamaya the name of it, or is bull kelp? What bull kelp. Bull kelp's the name of it. Is Yamaya is the name of the company. Yamaya was the name of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. got that. I I didn't get that yeah. at first. So I don't know if they I don't know if they still do it, but when I lived in the city, we used to go to the Academy of Sciences with our five gallon bottle, mm -hmm. and we would fill it up with the seawater. They would get it from by the fair lawns. Mm -hmm. Because people have aquariums and stuff, you know, where they need the seawater. Mm -hmm. But we would bathe in it. Oh. We didn't have an aquarium. Wow. I don't know if they still do that. Probably not. What year was that? Oh. <laughs> I can't. Oh my God, I want to go do it. It was, about, it was probably about 35 years ago. Wow, it sounds amazing. It was. I mean, wow. So, I mean, there are ways. I, but, I mean, I think all of us can explore ways like you're doing of you yeah. know, how to get this. There's something that happens when you. I like I like to be in the water when I harvest. Not everybody likes it, but I like it. There's something extremely. It's not even just healing. It's not even. It's just so nurturing to be yeah. in the salt water, especially the salt water with all the seaweeds all around. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of places where I go, you can barely. You're just wrapped. You're literally wrapped. There's how much <laughs> there is, and it's like. The, it's probably just the minerals. It's just I am so happy. I can't describe it. I just yeah. call it, I call it the happy place. It's just so. Unfortunately, it's only fifty two degrees. The water yeah, so you're like, in a wetsuit. I mean, you can't be naked, but some you get it. It's just something that oh my god, it's just really. Well, do you do a harvest on a private land or do you do on the? Um, it's parkland. It's mostly state park. State park. Mm. Um, years ago, when I worked for. A man who had his own company. He had a private. There was a. He had been given it when he bought his business. So there was a section of the coast that was. We used to call it Sully's place. This man Sully lived there, and he lived on the bluffs. And we just cut through his house and walked down the cliffs to that little area where he had sea palm. But um, most of it's public. Like the Mendocino Headlands is all mm -hmm. part of the state now park. I have a friend who has a place on the ocean there. Uh huh. Where they walk down. Yeah, you should <laughs> go. It's right next to the parks. Mm -hmm. You should go with them and go hunting and see if they harvest. Hopefully they do. I had a question. Are seaweeds, any seaweeds, poisonous? And how do you tell them apart? Oh, that's a great question. Out of the 600 varieties, nothing is poisonous. It's not like oh, mushrooms. Wow. Nothing amazing. is amazing. Yeah. Nothing is will kill you if you eat it. Mm. Um, there's one called Iridia, which is like a pink, kind of pinkish red maroon. And that tastes like sulfur. I mean, you put it in your mouth, like, but it doesn't hurt you. It just, Whoa. and because it, oh. it's red, it has yeah. that. You know, you can notice it from the color. But other than that, everything else is completely innocuous, oh, wow. which is really That's outstanding. Cool. Yeah. The one thing you don't want to do if you all go down and decide you have to go to the ocean, and I totally I completely encourage it, is you don't want to eat too much of the seaweed before it's dried. Mm -hmm. It it will just completely expand in your system. It has to be dried for a human to digest it. So, yeah. These are great recipes you got in here. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? So those handouts that I haven't even talked about, yeah. um, a lot of what I've said are in them, plus more. There are recipes, there are uh, nutritional information, there's... I've taken... Some of those are mine that I've written. Some are from other websites, from other friends. Um, suggested reading. Mm -hmm. And you know, actually, um, you were saying you need a license to mm -hmm. harvest. I remember when, when I was just learning to make the, ba the seaweed baskets, I was down at one of the beaches and they had all this bull kelp on it. And I said, oh, I'm gonna help mm -hmm. clean up the beach. So I started to take some, the ranger came over and said, you can't do that from a state park beach. Mm. Oh. oh, interesting. It's a felony, yes. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, oh. so, okay. Oh. But I was helping. <laughs> well, this year, unfortunately, you know, the seaweeds are food for lots of other creatures in the, in the ocean. Exactly. Abalone and tons I mean, of shellfish. The, right, but on the sand. beach. Yeah. Um, this year, we had a real collapse of the bull kelp of this oh. very green. It really collapsed. From different factors, the starfish started to die off a few years ago. They, the sea urchins came in like by the millions. The sea urchins started eating the bull kelp. Everything Ooh. is just kind of like, Whoa! 
it right now. So, but at the last minute, this last season, there was so much bull kelp in some areas. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna go to get bull kelp. Yeah. It came back. So it, I don't think it's collapsed. I think it just, you know, I have to say, like some years the seaweeds are phenomenal. Sometimes it's like, after all the rain last year, I thought, well, how's it gonna affect the seaweed? Because nori, especially nori, needs fresh water to grow. Oh. It's, uh, what is this seaweed, the wakame that you get in Japanese restaurants? Um, the oh, green? The salad. The salad. That's not wakame. I think that's hijiki, yeah. actually. Hijiki? Hijiki oh, yeah. in the East oh, Coast. Hijiki. Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. Mm. You don't so, have the nori formula here to make what you No, make. I didn't. So if you want to write it down, I didn't include that. So what do you say? It's a couple of teaspoons? So two tablespoons of coconut oil. Oh, my gosh. So I'm just gonna lay seaweed out, and if you'd like to buy some, yeah, here goes. This is cool. your chance. <laughs> and that second video, did you want to play it, or are you are you good? Um, I didn't know there was a second. There's a 2.55 gigabit gigabyte. You played this one, and you didn't play. I think it's the, the same. same. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Yum. Yeah. Oh, well, there were some in the actually try it. I'm not sure. It might be. Yeah. I didn't know it hold that much. It uh, this is 2.55, this is 188, I believe. So this is definitely the end of the video. There were some that weren't in it, so maybe. Yeah, want to play it? Sure, let's play it. Well, it's a lot of space. I'll just, I'm not sure if this is the same video or not. I'll just lay seaweed down here. Take some part. This is all kombu. Wow. Yeah. <coughs> this is good, this right here. Do you ever have people come up for like a workshop there so they can be a hands on? Yeah. Thank you. 